In part one of this tutorial video, I created a Windows 7 64 bit media refresh December 2019 retail ISO. And now I'm going to launch the script for the Dell Windows 7 reinstallation ISO. So I've just deleted the ISO, I've deleted the Win7 folder, and I've deleted the Drivers folder. So now I'm going to mount the Dell Windows 7 Professional Reinstallation ISO, and I'm going to copy its contents to a Win7 folder. And I've also deleted the Drivers folder, so in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the cab file for the Optiplex 7040. So I'll use 7-zip to go ahead and extract this cab file. And I'm going to take the 64-bit drivers and rename the folder drivers and instead of just having the USB 3.0 and uh, Intel storage controllers I'll have the full driver set for this system. So this is only available for the business models but these will be the later models that were supported for Windows 7 64-bit um, using OEM downgrade rights from Windows 10 64-bit or Windows 8.1 64-bit. Okay, so we've got the new drivers folder and the new Win7 folder. And I'm going to copy these directly to C. So we have the Win7 folder and if we wanted to change addition, we would need to modify this slp.cmd file, change the OEM slip key to the OEM slip key of the addition we want to install. And we would also need to modify this ei.cfg file. Now, because it's already set for Windows 7 Professional and I want to install Windows 7 Professional, I'll not bother with this. Okay, so let's test this script for the Dell Windows 7 Professional reinstallation ISO. And now it's slightly different from the other script simply because Dell have already included some of the updates for the Professional Edition and the boot.wim has already been updated so we don't need to bother with this. So once again I'm just going to add in a couple of pauses I put that one in the wrong place, so I'll just modify it. And this is just to check that everything slipstreams okay. So let's save it as a batch file. And with this one, I've, I've updated the script to include creating the, the ISO. So we get information about the install.wim. And then because I've got a pause, I'll need to press any key to continue. And I'll go ahead and it'll slipstream the standalone update. And it will go ahead and slipstream all the drivers into Home Basic. Now, all the drivers seem to slipstream okay, except for the AMD and NVIDIA video driver. Now, on my actual Optiplex 7040, I don't have an AMD or NVIDIA video card, so I won't be able to test whether they actually slipstreamed okay, but someone else following out the instructions in this tutorial video can, can hopefully leave some feedback in the comments. 
So once it's done Home Basic, press any key to continue and it'll go ahead with Home Premium. Press any key to continue, it'll go ahead with Professional. And then press any key to continue and it'll go ahead with Ultimate. Now you could save some time by just copying the code to update Professional opposed to updating all the editions. But in my case, I'm testing out the script and I'm going to update all the editions. Okay, so press any key to continue. And now it'll go ahead and give us the details about the new install.wim. Press any key to continue and it will go ahead and create the ISO. And this will be saved in the folder C ISO. And this ISO file is going to be quite large because it's not only just Windows 7, but it's got all the Dell system drivers on it. So let's just go ahead and copy this ISO to the, the host PC. Now this host PC is actually the Optiplex 7040. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use Rufus and we're going to make a bootable USB and we're going to test whether the installation ISO works and we're going to test whether it installs the drivers and whether OEM system lock pre-installation is still applied. So let's open up Rufus, load the installation ISO because it's a UFI system, we want to have a GPT prediction scheme. And because the new install.wim is greater than 4 gigabytes, we're going to need to use the NTFS file system. And select start. And then we should create our new bootable USB. So I'm going to go very quickly through the installation process. So the point of this video is not to go through the installation process. It's just to demonstrate updating the installation media, but we just want to check that it works. And this is sixth generation Intel hardware. So it's the latest hardware that will run Windows 7 because Intel never made drivers for newer hardware and as this operating system is now at end of life, they never will. Okay, so if we power down this system now, what we can do is power it up and press F12 to get to the boot menu. Okay, because Windows 10 is currently installed, um, secure boot is going to be enabled, so we're going to need to change the boot mode settings. So we want a UFI boot, but we want it without secure boot. And now we can select our USB under UFI boot. And we can see that the Windows 7 setup proceeds as normal. So it's going to take quite some time to load the files because it's got Windows 7, all the updates and all the drivers and starting windows screen will take a while as well so let's just go ahead with the install so we're not asked for a product key because the efi.cfg file is there and oem system lock pre-installation is automatically carried out now during the windows setup you'll notice that the resolution changes and this is because the video driver is automatically installed along with all the other drivers. And you'll probably see some additional screens that you almost never see in the Windows 
seven setup such as the screen to connect to the internet and this is because the drivers for the for the wireless card and the ethernet are inbuilt into the windows 7 installation media which is rarely the case so there we go the video driver has automatically been installed And now if I remove the installation media and just powered off the system, it would essentially be left at the state of a factory image. So it would just be Windows 7 with all the standalone updates and it would have its system drivers inbuilt. Okay, so we'll get the screen where we're asked to input our username. So this would change it from the kind of pseudo factory image. Let's just select ask me later. See, we can connect to the internet here because the wireless card is recognized, but because the operating system is at end of life, I don't want to connect to the internet. So let's just right click computer and select properties. And we see that Windows is activated offline and the product ID contains OEM 899, which means OEM system lock pre-installation is applied. If we go to device manager, we see there's no errors because all the system drivers have been installed. And if we go to uninstall or change a program, we can have a look at the installed updates. And we can see the convenience roll up and the November 2019 security rollup are installed.